Welcome back to this clown's garage. We will start doing the twin turbo Trans Am. So this is the first thing we're gonna do here is we're getting a setup, serpentine setup from Eddie Motorsports. And this is what it comes with. It's a complete kit. Um, this is in order to move everything, all the all the accessories, you know, together in the motor. So we have room for piping and turbos and all that stuff. So this is what we have here and let's begin all right so here's the trans amp gta with the, serp the factory serpentine belt set up uh, we went ahead and had the Eva the ac system evacuated so there's no refrigerant in it that way we can disconnect everything we'll start off by taking off this air intake hose it's not a oem one this is an aftermarket one but it, uh, it's pretty simple to take off it only has one uh, 7 16th nut over here so we'll start by taking that off first All right, now we'll just wiggle this off and just make sure we disconnect the air temperature sensor that's underneath here. Okay, that's out of the way. Take a half inch drive ratchet, put it over here and pull the tensioner up and you can pull the serpentine belt right off. Next up, we're gonna disconnect the battery. This one actually has a quick disconnect, so makes it simple. All right, battery's disconnected. All right, next we're gonna disconnect the uh, AC compressor connectors. One in the front, one in the back. Put that to the side. I'm about to disconnect the alternator, look what we found. I actually found the bracket. It broke the bracket. The aluminum bracket actually broke off. The <laughs> and the only thing that was holding it in place was the belt. Because it was, it was tightened out. It was uh, pulling it that way. Very interesting. All right, well. Wow. <laughs> There's a 10 millimeter bulk in the back over here. Now, since this is cracked, I'm gonna have to hold this in place. So that wasn't too bad. T50 bolt here, Torx. So go in here and take that off. Okay. Let's get this connector off, put a little flathead over here, pull it out. And there goes the alternator. All right, next we're gonna pull up this AC line in the back of the AC compressor. It's got one bolt holding it, it's a 15 millimeter. Okay. It's a 5 16th over here where the water pump hose hoses. So it's gonna take that off. And make sure you have a drain pan underneath. Now the water pump, there are four 9 16th bolts. So I'll try to get the bottom first. All right, now we're gonna take off the two top bolts. Okay. That's the water pump. Now we have two T45 Torx on the bottom over here. So I'm going to go ahead and take those off. Get the persuader out. There's another T45 right here. Now we got a 916 over here. You need a deep socket to get to that. Now this thing should come off in one shot. Here's a money shot, baby. There you go. You can take this hose off, 516. 
there. This is an 18 millimeter here where the power steering is. We're gonna use a flared crow foot and an extension. Now I'm just gonna disconnect this hose clamp. I let most of the fluid drain out. All right, so we're ready to take off the last bracket. There's actually four bolts holding it in. The two bolts under here are underneath the brackets. You really can't see them. One down here and one under here, and then two down at the bottom. We'll start by cracking loose the two top ones. All right, next we're going to get the bottom bolt, which is the T45, all the way down to the bottom. And this particular model also holds the ground wire to the battery. So. All right. The next one right above it is a 9 16 That's loose. We're also going to loosen this up, last one up here. Also 9 16 And should be should be ready to come off. That's everything. And that's it. These are E8 sockets to take these studs off. You go, they also call them reverse torques or star sockets. So whatever the hell you want to call them, this is what you use to do this. And if you don't have these, you can also use a pair of pliers, but be careful with that. You can strip it, the head. I'm just going to go ahead and take these off. Now you're going to take these water pump gaskets off. There's another one here. And that's it. Now I'm going to take this bypass nipple off because we're going to need it in this car. <coughs> Woo! Had to use some clown strength in that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and wind that out. I'm going to put some thread sealant on here on this pipe plug and put that sucker right in there. And we're good. All right, so actually, Eddie Motorsports recommends starting with the water pump brackets first and spacers. Um, and they leave the crank pulley, the factory crank pulley, last. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually remove the factory crank pulley first and install the Eddie Motorsports pulley first. Only because all the rest of the brackets get bolted to the top of the motor. And it'll be kind of a little bit more difficult to get to that later on. So we'll start at the bottom first and work our way up. Just like that, and it drops into the antifreeze bucket. <laughs> All right, now I'm putting a strap wrench here to hold this in place so it doesn't crank over. As he's trying to crack the 916 bolts in there. So here's the Eddie Motorsports crank, aluminum crankshaft pulley. It does come with the three bolts that go around. You'll just have to reuse your factory or OEM or replacement crankshaft bolts for the center. I'll open the crank pulley in now. All right, so we're gonna tighten up the center crankshaft bolt pulley
All right, next we're going to get the, the last three bolts to the crankshaft pulley. These, five these are 516s Allen. Okay. You good? And that's it. All right, next up we're going to put the studs for the water pump in. It's going to be four studs. The longer one goes on the passenger bottom bolt, and then the other three are the same size. Uh, we're also going to put some thread sealant on these since these holes run direct into the water jackets and they leak coolant if you don't put some thread sealant on it. And you really don't have to go too crazy with this, just enough to cover the bolt. Also you don't want to over tighten these because these threads they just need the bottom down. Don't crank them down too tight because you can crack the block. Okay. Okay. Alright, now these three studs should be out about two and a half inches. So as you can see here, we're backing this one out too. So these two and a half inches, the bottom one should be out to three and a half. So let's check to see if we're there on the bottom one. Should be three and a half. We still have a little bit to go up to there. There you go. There you go, three and a half. So we're just gonna take these nuts off and continue the installation. All right, so we're gonna start putting the O-rings on, the water pump spacer blocks. Uh, there's some o-rings here. We're gonna have to just put some silicone on it. Don't mind these gloves here. They're extra small Also, this is also recommended by Eddie Motorsports. They want you to use silicone RTV silicone on the o-rings So make sure you do that If you decide to go with this pulley setup And actually I think we're gonna put a little extra silicone on it just to make a good seal against the block and we'll add a little bit of silicone on the back side here I would install the first spacer block here. Sit that in right. Okay. And now we're going to put the O-rings and silicone on the other on the other space on the other spacer block. This is the space that's going to go on the left side. On the driver's side. Driver's side of the vehicle. All right. Let's go install this bracket. Installing the next block. All right, next up, this is the power steering bracket. These are all 516 Allen head bolts. Also, if the camera work is a little shaky, that's because the uh, camera girl surrounded by two Greeks. So she's a little nervous. <laughs> We're not gonna actually tighten these up. We're just gonna catch them, send them in, and every when everything's lined up, we'll tighten everything up. All right, next up we're going to add some RTV to the water pump. Okay. All right, let's install this water pump here. Should go on nice and smoothly. Let's take a look. Okay, there you go. Next we're going to add these screw-on spaces. Uh, different sizes. The yeah. small one goes over there. There's one short one that goes on the longer bolt here. And then the other three are the same size. Now you just need to open in a wrench to tighten this down. Let me grab one for you. Alright, so 11 16 wrench. Just 
going to start tightening these bolts up. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and tighten up this power steering bracket. The two Allen bolts. Okay. It's tight. All right, next up we're going to install the main bracket, but before we do that, we need to put some anti-seize on the bolts for the main bracket. So we'll do that now. We'll add some anti-seize to all the, all the main bolts. And at this point, pretty much every bolt from here on out they recommend you use anti-seize since you'll be screwing stainless steel into aluminum. So you're going to want to use the anti-seize on pretty much every bolt from here on out. All right. So here we're going to install the main bracket. And we're just going to put the bolts hand tight. This amazing camera work is brought to you by Brianna. That's right. She knows who her clown daddy is, right? Yes, I do. All right, now shut up, bitch, and tape. Okay, Dad. All right. Now that we have the full bolts in and hand tight, let's move on to the next step. All right, next up we're going to install the power steering pump. Again, this is the GM Type 2 uh, power steering pump. Small, very compact. This one we ordered with the remote oil tank, so we put it on the side somewhere. It's not going to be on the actual pump. All right. Uh, this is only held in by two bolts. Again, th these are stainless steel bolts going to an aluminum bracket. You're going to want to use anti-seize on that. Okay. All right. So I'm a little bit of an awkward angle, so you can guys can see this on the camera. But what we're going to do is the bolts got to go through the pump like this. And then basically just come down to the to the bracket. Okay. This one's a little tighter to get to. So I caught that by hand. Now we'll tighten it down with a ratchet. All right, next we're gonna install the AC compressor. With the same bolts we installed the anti-seize earlier. Put the first one here on top. And we're just gonna hand tighten everything. As you can see now, everything is coming together. It's gonna to be everything to be squeezed tight, nice into the block. Nice and tight, baby. That's the way we all like it. All right, that one's hand tight. Okay, all right, so the last bolt for the compressor is this shoulder bolt here. Again, we added some anti-seize to it. And we just got to put it at the last back bolt. And this bolt basically goes into the water pump spacer. Let's reach down here. Again, we're just going to put everything in hand tight until we line everything up later on. Good. That's in. Alright, next up we're going to be installing the AC compressor clutch cover. Basically doesn't do anything, just covers up the front of the cover, the AC compressor clutch. It just looks nice. It's a machined aluminum and a powder coated black. The bolts here, they recommend you put some blue Loctite on, on the bolts. Then we're going to go ahead and do that. Since cap screws. For the cap screws. Alright, so we'll install the cover here for the AC compressor clutch. And this is a... 3 16 Allen. Don't want to go overly tight with these. Remember, guys. This is just a cover, and the belt does not ride on it. There is no stress at all on it, so don't kill it. All right, next up, we're going to install the water pump pulley, and uh, they recommend red Loctite on these bolts. We're going to go ahead and add some red Loctite. Let me go ahead and start, install this. Remember, it's always a good idea to put all your bolts in to make sure you catch them in before you start tightening everything down. It just helps line everything up. And 
we're good. All right, next up we're going to install the reinstall the lower right of the hose. Okay. All right, next up we're going to install the tensioner pulley. Okay. Good. All right, next up we're going to install the <clears throat> tensioner uh, cover. It's an aluminum cover, just basically decorative piece that covers the front of the of the tensioner bracket. And uh, we're going to use some thread locker on the bolts. I'm not zooming in on George's crutch, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> okay, so the bolts I go through are 1 8 aluminum, uh, 1 8 the uh, Allen bolt. Alright, next up we're going to install the alternator. All right, so a little problem we just ran into. Um, the power lug coming off the alternator, it goes to the power wire, back to the battery. It actually touches the thermostat housing. So we're gonna have to actually clock the distributor, uh, the alternator. Yeah, we don't have enough room to yeah. put it more over so we can put the bolt yeah. in. Can't get the bolt in to tighten it down. It's not really a big deal because these alternators can be clocked. You can unbolt it and actually clock the alternator. It's not a big deal. Um, but at this moment, we have to remove this and clock that around. That's an E8 star socket, or some people call it reverse Torx. So go ahead here and take these off. All right, usually sometimes you don't have this tab here and you could clock this over, but this is in the way now. So we have to take the whole case off. In order to do that, you gotta take the cap off in the front, take the nut off. Now we're just gonna take these Allens off here. Now since this has to be a specific torque here, I like to put uh, some white out here so you know exactly where to line up afterwards when you torque it back down. Let's go ahead. Put your impact on here and grab this with the other hand. And that comes right out. Get your lock washer. And that came right off. Now use your trusty mallet. Okay, hold on. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Just have to get out. Oh. Right now we have enough room over here. See it spins through. So we go ahead and clock this over where it should be. Okay. Let's just go do a mock up of it. Gonna mock it up on the car, see if it's correct. So that's where we want it. Yeah, so the original position was there. We're gonna we're gonna clock it right there. Alright, so we put a mark here just in case we forget where it's at. So, you can go ahead and tap it back in. Now we do the bolts. Okay, make sure I reinstall the space so that belongs right there. Pulley goes on next. Lock washer. And then not. Just make sure the markers are facing the outside so you can line it up from where you had it. So you see, I gotta go from here to here now, and that's gonna be tight. And we're good. Anyway. Alright, now we're gonna put it back on, see if it's correctly clocked. Also, when you take the when you put everything back together, spin this, make sure there's no binding. Because sometimes you put the case on a little cockeyed and you have to put the case back straight and tighten them back down. So as you can see we're good now. Alright this is an 8 millimeter down here. So I'm going to tighten this down. It's good. 
All right, so these three ones are six millimeters, so go ahead and tighten those down. And you're done. Six millimeter bolt here. Another one here. I'm gonna go too tight on these. The last bolt on the compressor on the back here. All right. This is a six millimeter bolt in here. That's good. All right, this is also six millimeter and you have to turn the tensioner over to get to it. All right, so this is how it routes. You got it going down here, wherever you see it's ribbed, um, it's grooved here, the rib goes on it obviously. So it goes around like this under the, the water pump, it's a reverse flow. Then this goes over here. You just gotta pull this down, put a half inch ratchet on it. No, you just move the bolt. Uh, there you go. Okay. And let go of the tensioner. Nice. All right, last part is the upper hose. Obviously, we still have to put the connection for the battery terminals on, move some of the wires. Remember, the remote power steering bottle we're going to end up putting somewhere, possibly over here or something. Uh, but, again, you guys are probably still wondering, why did we put on an aftermarket serpentine belt setup when this vehicle already came with one. That's going to be up next in a minute. All right, so we're disconnecting these AC lines, going to get this out of the way. This compressor here is going to have some custom lines made up. So we're just going to take this hose out of the way. We went ahead and unbolted this already. Just going to take it out. You're just using an adjustable wrench, that's all. Yeah, regular opening wrench. Adjustable. That's it. All right, so like again, we went with this serpentine belt setup for a reason, and the reason was is we needed clearance. And this right here is the main reason why we needed the clearance. Not that, just one. Not just one, but Two. twin turbos, one on each side of this vehicle. We'll be getting turbo charges right there. That's right. Yes, sir. And that's the main reason why we went with this setup here. Yeah. It gave us plenty of clearance so we can get the turbos in there. And uh, hopefully we'll see how that goes in the next few videos. Next thing on the agenda here is to take this reservoir, coolant reservoir out. It's a 10 millimeter nut. <coughs> it's underneath the wheel well over here. So you can see that. Right there. So you need a 10 millimeter deep socket to get to that. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Next thing here, there was a bolt that goes through here, but we're not going to show that because there wasn't there on this one. So we're going to take this one off here, the overflow, sorry this one here, the overflow line, and that's a quarter it's a quarter inch bolt on that one. Comes off just like that. Now we can pull off the whole reservoir tank. Okay. Alright, next up we're going to remove the heater core oil cooler bypass hose. It runs from the top of the radiator into these two bypass lines, which go back around underneath the motor to the oil cooler and then back up around through here and to the heater core. Okay. This is a quarter inch. Quarter inch. <clears throat> okay. And the bottom clamp.
Okay, the best technique to take off ho heater hoses is usually just try to twist it. If the hose doesn't want to twist, just put a pick inside there and break the seal loose. And then once it's loose, twist it off, on and off. Or if you don't have a pick, you could try to get a flat head behind there. Anything just to break the seal. Okay. Now we're going to take the radiator cover bolts off. They're 10 millimeters. All right, next up we're going to remove the upper right ear of the hose by removing the clamp here, which is, this one happens to be a 10 millimeter. Okay. Okay. All right, next up we're going to remove the, the two upper bolts that hold the top of the right ear of the fans to the actual top cover here. You have one, two, those are a half inch. Okay, now the top cover should come right off. Also just make sure you don't drop the, the rubbers here that actually hold the radiator. Sometimes they fall out. All right, next we're gonna remove the, uh, the lower high pressure condenser line from the condenser right here. It's gonna be two wrenches, it's a three quarter and a five eighths. We're using open end wrenches here, but you can use open end. Non, uh, non monkey wrenches. So just so you guys know what we're doing here is we're gonna take the radiator out and the condenser out so we could uh, cut some of the radiator support off and move the radiator forward to make room for the turbos and the piping. Okay, that's loose. All right, also to get this line to move, you're gonna have to remove, so you have a little plate to, to wiggle it out of the condenser, you're gonna have to remove the 10 millimeter bolt here. There's actually a hose that's a metal line snapped into the bracket here. You can pull that out first by lifting it up. That goes back to the charcoal canister. And then we'll just take off the 10 millimeter bolt. From there. And now the line, as you can see, has some room to come out and it's out of the condenser. All right, next up we're gonna remove the fans. Now these fan stock have bolts on the bottom too, holding yeah. them in, but here's the wonder bar here. Yeah, this car has an aftermarket wonder bar, which blocked the factory bolts, so it was basically just wedged between the wonder bar and the lower part of the radiator support, which was holding it in place, and yeah. it was like that for many years, didn't have any issues, not recommended, but in a situation where aftermarket stuff doesn't really fit the way you want it to, you kind of have to improvise. Um, so basically all we had to do was basically pull up on this and it was disconnected and no, I just got the two clips you just got to remove the the two clips to the ready to the fan motors okay one plug there it's not the clip okay there we go a little harness clip over here at the bottom okay and that's it it'll come out We're going to go ahead and start preparing to get this radiator out. So we're going to need to remove the tranny cool lines. This vehicle is an automatic, so it has the metal lines going to the transmission. And that basically circulates the transmission fluid to cool it off and heat it at the same time. A lot of people think it's just to cool it off, but it actually Bring it up to temps. brings it up to temps and also keeps it maintained at a certain temperature. Yeah. Ideally, you don't want to go over 230 degrees Fahrenheit with transmission cool, uh, fluid, but uh, that's the whole main purpose of this. So. Uh, from the factory, there's two lines, top and bottom, which is a feed and a return. This car here, most of the things on here aren't original, and there's some, a lot of aftermarket parts. So it has actually an external cooler also in line with it. So we only have the top factory metal line here, and then there's some hoses going to the front of the condenser, which has another small radiator. Uh, but to get it out, we're going to have to remove this line here. We'll also take off the lower radiator hose. That's a half inch. We're using a flare. You'll need to use a flared wrench, line wrench, made specifically for removing lines. And this is a half inch. 
You could also probably get away with a really thick wrench to put on there so it won't strip it. But it's recommended only to use line wrenches on here. And they're very easy to round out the nut with a regular wrench. So also remember to put a pan because this is training fluid in here and it's gonna leak. And we have pan underneath. So always have a pan available because you will make a mess. But as long as you prepare for it, you'll be okay. Okay. That's the first line. Like I said, be prepared. It's not leaking now, but you're gonna see as soon as you remove the bottom one, you will see fluid leaking. This is it. Again, this is an aftermarket clamp here, so it has actually a 10 millimeter head on it. I'm gonna loosen that. Tug and twist. That's what she said. And that's off. All right. And our hose is removed. Quarter inch clamp. One more down here on the bottom. I'm gonna go from the bottom side to get it. Up. Wiggle and jiggle. Yeah, and there goes your training fluid. Okay. Okay. All right. And she's out. Next, we're gonna pull the condenser out. The transmission cooler is also connected to it. Okay. Yeah, some more rubber. cooler. Rubber stops here. Okay. Again. Okay. And that's out. All right. So we're gonna actually remove this panel here to to get a better view of the front of the radish shroud the front of the right is support, excuse me, and uh, see what kind of room we have, because remember, our, our actual goal is to move the radiator from where it sits here, more forward, so we have more clearance in front, in front of the motor. All right, so these are 10 millimeters, all of them? It's got 10 millimeter bolts, about nine of them going all the way around. Okay. Okay, now that the bolts are all removed, you're going to want to lift and pull this out. Okay. Okay. The cable for the hood has to be disconnected so you can pull the panel away. Okay, now you just want to pop this up. And take the cable out of the locking clip. Excuse me. And then cable is out. Next we're going to want to remove this uh, bracket. This bracket basically holds the top plate here, which is actually for the hood latch. And there's one 10 millimeter down at the bottom of the riding support. comes out. Next is a, we have a plastic air guide here that's between the bumper and the radiator. Directs air flow through the radiator itself. We're gonna remove this thing here. We remove it so we have some, so we can see what's back here for clearance purposes. Yes. Next up we're gonna pull the, the four side bolts that are actually a 930 seconds. Okay, so you have six clips on each side, also holding this plastic shroud in. I'm gonna use a panel clip remover. Okay. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and pull this shroud out or air guide, whatever you want to call it. Air shroud, air guide. And now we can see what's going on back here. Looks pretty. We're going to go ahead and move these X brackets also. Looks like there's 10 millimeter bolts holding in, four of them. There's also another plastic 
uh, air guide bracket here. Uh, get that out of the way. Okay, there we go. Other side. One. Okay. All right, last bolt there. Heads rods will come out. Okay, now we're gonna we put some tape on there. We're gonna use a marker and a straight edge ruler to mark where the cut's gonna be. To take this whole piece off over here, this whole piece is gonna come right off, so we can move the radiator forward. So we made our cut here. I'm gonna bend this forward a little bit. And then there's another inner plate that we have to cut through to get the rest of this off. So you guys know what we're doing now. As you can see, in there there's another panel. We cut some of it off. So we're just going to go in and cut it with the rest of the sawzall. That's what it looks like underneath here. Just hammering the rest of this in. The English wheel technique. Now it looks stuck. Right back here, little. It hits here. Right there. Shit, man, you almost got it, but it doesn't. Now we're just going to grind this a little bit and put some spray on this so it won't rust. This is just to get the rough edges out. And then we're going to go to body shop to weld this. They're going to re-grind re it and weld it down. So we're just going to touch this up a little bit here. Alright, we put the radiator back in. And as you can see over here by cutting the support, we gained at least 3 inches more clearance. So now there's plenty of room for the Dorelli dual fan shroud setup that we are putting in and for any turbo piping to fit before we hit any of the accessories. All right, so we're gonna try to, we're gonna actually remove the battery trays on both sides for intercooling piping. So to do this as neat as possible, we're gonna actually drill out the spot welds and just remove the panel. In case we ever wanna put a battery tray back in, we could just put it right back to the factory location. Yeah. And they also sell new ones here. Yeah, yeah, they do trays. sell they do sell brand new battery trays, so you can always replace it. These are drill bits you're using. It's a bimetal hole saw pilot bit. This is from Harbor Freight. So those both are loose now. Bend it up a little bit. All right, now we're gonna chisel it. Okay. All popped out. Yep. Look, they all popped off. Look at that one there too. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so this is the passenger side. The battery tray is fully out to make room for the piping. 
Now this is the driver's side battery tray. So we started dr drilling out the spot welds, um, but unfortunately, some of the areas where the spot welds are, we can't really see them. This tray, what happened was at one point or another, uh, battery acid leaked onto it and stripped away the paint and it started to rust. After it rusted, we sanded it down and we put a uh, Pour 15 epoxy coat over it. And that paint, unfortunately, between the rust and the paint, we can't really see where, where the spot welds are. So what we're doing is we're actually just peeling this back with a with a vice grip and just using a chisel like this in between basically just to get to the end of wherever the spot will, will be and then try to drill it out it's a little messy unfortunately but really we don't have an option considering that this panel is so badly rusted at one point or another you can see some rust here over here um, you can see some of the rust on the yeah. panel over here which was originally covered with the epoxy coat I mean, there's different ways of doing this too. You really don't have to take our way and take the battery trays out. You could probably just plasma cut them out. But we're doing it this way just in case later on when we put the battery tray back in, we'll put a new one back in I need on both, side, both sides. So there's different ways of doing this. This is just one way. Yeah, you can, you can just cut it out yeah. if you want to cut it out. We thought this would be a cleaner way to do it, but not realizing this side over here was going to give us a hard time. At this point, it would have just been easy to cut it out, but since we already started drilling it out, we're just going to try to finish it up. Yep. All right, so what we'll do is just peel, we're just using a vice grip to peel back the tray as much as possible and then getting in between with a, with a chisel and trying to break, or at least try to land where the weld was at one point or another. And then... See, like right there is a weld. So it looks like there's a weld right in here. We'll get a drill and basically just drill that spot weld out. All right, we actually took the half inch drill bit and we cut it down only so that we can get in, get it down much lower into the drill and have a better angle. Or you can have an any degree drill. Yeah, that too. <laughs> this is the cheaper way for us. Right through. What we're using is we're using a gas gasket scraper with a hammer. <laughs> Seems to be working pretty good. Yeah. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that all around. All right. Now that we got the welds and the rust that was connecting the battery tray to the inner fender, we're gonna peel this back like this to get to the last welds on the bottom side of the front part, so we can chisel them and drill them out. Okay, just like that. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That's it. Good old rusty battery tray. Out. All right, so that's all out now. Plenty of room for these pipes, baby. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the. This is actually called a Wonder Bar, and used on GM third gen vehicles. It's a it's a brace that holds the two chassis rails together, so you don't tear the chassis the left chassis leg from the steering box, which was a common issue. Um, this one here is an aftermarket one, which has an adjustable. Uh, preload point here where you can preload it if you need to put a little extra tension on the chassis rail um, but uh, we're going to remove this so that we can actually snake the intercooler pipes down turbo pipes are going to come down through in between here and into the intercoolers up under here so yeah wrap this is where the battery goes yeah wrap under come up yep. 
All right, and so uh, those are 15 millimeter. Yeah, two 15 millimeter bolts holding the sway bar bushing, but it also holds the wonder bar in. So we're gonna go ahead and start removing. This. Okay. All right. That comes like that. You just slide this off now. All right. Stuck to the bushings. One, two. And so things just come And that's right. out. Now we're just gonna put the sway bar bush bushings, mount them back up. Actually, we'll replace it with some. I'm gonna go ahead and replace these with some new ones because these are actually pretty torn up pretty bad. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, we'll yeah. go ahead. I'll just put new ones in and bolt it back up. Yep. Okay, now we're taking the engine oil cooler off. That's the bracket right there with a the half inch bolt. And it's welded onto the cooling lines and it's bolted through over there onto the engine. Holds the shield on. Holds this shield on over here. So the two lines that feed the coolant to the engine oil cooler and that's where the oil filter is screwed on to let's see if we can take that off Okay, you have one more over there, it's a 7 16th nut. Okay. Alright, now we're going to cut these lines here, these rubber hoses. Yeah, there we go. So we cut both hoses. Now we're gonna cut these tubes with a sawzall right there. It's easy to just to take them out. They're cut. Pull these out. This cake. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start working on the AC system. All right, as you know, we went with a uh, aftermarket pulley system, which is, this is Eddie Mel Motorsports, uh, but it uses um, a standard sand and compressor that most of these uh, aftermarket pulley systems use. It's a small, compact compressor. Um, now, when you're converting to this type of compressor, uh, usually this comes in some type of a kit where you get everything from condenser to the evaporator to everything you need um, but this is more of a we're doing a custom system so um, we've actually installed this compressor in a stock third gen with the stock components and it works pretty good um, actually fairly good actually um, but uh, not optimal um, but what we opted to do with this car is we wanted to try to really get the AC system to work really cold like it would be in a factory car. So instead of using the uh, original tube fin condenser, we're going with a, what they call a parallel flow condenser. It's supposed to move, uh, it's supposed to have a lot more contact surface area of the refrigerant through the fins. So that way you get a lot more heat dissipation and that way you can remove the heat quicker from the cabin. Um, also this actual condenser is um, the largest aftermarket condenser they make which is sold by Vintage Air. It's called their Monster Flow. Um, and it's actually exactly the size you need for a third gen. I, we've used this thing before in other third gens. And it's the exact opening size of the factory opening. If you come and look at the front and you take the measurements, it is 26 inches by 17, which is the exact size of the opening of the, of the front of the radiator support. So you get all your airflow through without any restrictions to your radiator. Uh, and that's the reason why we went with this condenser is because it's the largest one. We also ordered from uh, a company called Old Air, which sells a lot of uh, conversion kits for AC systems. There's a package that they sell with the receiver dryer, 
That's another thing we're doing with this car is we're actually going to convert from an accumulator to a receiver dryer. We went ahead and had this little custom piece made up, which is basically we took the old accumulator and just cut the two fittings off and welded them in. This is going to get screwed here, eliminating the accumulator. We're going to mount the receiver dryer in the front. Let me just get the receiver dryer. So the system will have a receiver dryer mounted directly in the front here, bolted in. That's what this line here is going to be, okay? And then the who, liquid line... Who makes the receiver dryer? This actually came from old air, but pretty much uh, the receiver dryers are all standard. They sell them in short six and a half or eight and a half inch long. Um, this is the larger one. Um, I went with the larger one only... We went with the larger one because we went with a much larger condenser, so we went with the larger receiver dryer bottle. Okay. Uh, for the liquid line, what we did was, is because we're converting everything, we're getting rid of the accumulator, Accumulators are systems that, that work with uh, an orifice tube and the reason for that is because of something called flood, flood back to the AC compressor. Um, and uh, what that does is basically when a system is charged properly or overly charged and depending on the type of system you have, uh, anything with an orifice tube will have an accumulator and accumulator works to trap the excess refrigerant coming out of the evaporator before it goes back to the compressor to stop what we call flood back to the compressor and stopping it from freezing over and actually damaging the compressor and and basically flooding the compressor with refrigerant and wiping the oil out of the compressor so that's why you would have an accumulator but since we're going to a receiver dryer bottle we're going to need an actual expansion valve or a TXV some people call it and this is just a uh, standard TXV Again, you, we got this with, from Old Air, um, and uh, basically we bought a small two and a half inch line. It's a dash eight, and we took the factory line here. We removed here. Come around this way. We removed the orifice tube out of the line, and what's going to happen is this line here will just be the expansion valve, the new expansion valve, which will take place of the of the orifice tube. It's going to get screwed right onto there and then the sense tube will get mounted on the actual uh, evaporator to control the TXV opening and closing. All right? And the liquid line, what we're going to do is we're going to run a, a, a four foot liquid line, metal line, down the rail, around and down to the receiver dryer bottle. We'll show you all that work when we yeah. do it. All right, but what we're working on right now is we're working on getting this aftermarket condenser mounted in and the receiver drive bottle mounted in. We're gonna go ahead and mock it up, make some marks and drill some holes for the line to come through and also for the brackets to hold the condenser onto the radio support. Yeah, the little issue we're having is the brackets here. As you can see, they're spaced, they're well done on the other side. So we gotta make some type of spacer here so we could mount this over here to the frame. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna make a one inch spacer and in between here and the rail, then we'll make uh, the right ear support. And there's four of these brackets. Four brackets on two the Two on the bottom, two on the top. And we'll mount it up. All right, so we're going to drill through the right ear support over here so the AC line can come through to the receiver drive bottle on the, that's going to be on the other side. And uh, the fitting was a three quarter, so we're going to use a three quarter inch uni bit. Come straight through here. And it should be right about. Actually, the measurements here don't have to be 100% perfect, only because uh, the aluminum lines are bendable. So we just need to be in the general vicinity. All right, so now we passed the line through there. We thread it onto the condenser, and we're, we could bend this by hand just to get it to line up maybe with the other lines once everything's all done. We're just mocking it up now. All right, now that we mocked this up, I'm gonna take an awl and scratch it over here. Where we want to make the hole to mount this. So we're gonna go right there. So now we're measuring to see, this, we're gonna put a little block back there as a spacer. So we're gonna cut that with some square tubing. We measured it. Now we have a square in the market. You're going to scratch it with the awl.
Okay, one down, three more to go. Now we're just gonna drill holes here. Since we're using these bolts, these won't go through, so we gotta enlarge in these two. So that should be good. Yep, goes right through. We just do the rest now. Okay, so we drilled all four holes. We got the mounting blocks ready, the nuts and bolts. And now I'm gonna put them in. Okay, now this whole thing is nicely mocked up. As you can see here. The tube went through the hole that we drilled down there. And all these blocks are serving their purpose. Everything is looking nice and neat. Now the next thing we're gonna do here is put that in. Dry bottle, okay. This little bracket came with our kit. That came with the line and the dryer bottle with the straps. It's all one kit from Old Air products that we purchased this from. This is gonna go over here in line. This bracket, the writer support actually had a hole right there and we mocked it up and it looks like it's gonna fit just perfect. So the one hole that was there, we're gonna just put a little mark with a marker there and drill through that so that way we can bolt this bracket in, tie this up and this is the dryer will be all set in. We're just gonna drill that hole, my favorite thing to do. So we just scratched the hole with the awl. This is the hole, the factory hole that was here in the, in the writer support. That's going to be the new hole right above it. Just going to go right ahead and drill through. And that's it. Perfect. Now that that's bolted in. And that's how it looks, all mocked up. Looks stock, baby. Just remember to, um, while you're doing a mock-up, just make sure that you cap off your condenser. Um, try not to open up the receiver dry bottle because the incandescent will absorb moisture. The more it absorbs, um, the harder it will be later on for it to remove moisture from the AC system. And try to keep uh, the condenser sealed as much as possible. Our evaporator is going to be replaced with a new one, so that's the only reason why it's open. It's really more for mock-up purposes. At the meantime, uh, we're just going to, we have the condenser open right now because we have to have the line there in order to mock it up. But the condenser can always be vacuumed out and the moisture will be removed, but the receiver dry bottle you really don't want to leave open at all, not for long. And today we're going to try to get a battery relocation bracket mounted. Uh, on the third gen, third gen Trans Ams and Camaros, you can put it on either side. One side has the spare tire. We're going to put it on the opposite side so we can leave the spare tire in the vehicle. Um, so we're going to have to remove this panel. This panel here in the back here was already half off. There's actually four plastic screws at a flathead screw right here. And two Phillips screws on here holds the panel in. Uh, it was already half loose so we pulled it out of the way real quick. And this panel here is held in by some clips. We have... Uh, the curtain back here has a clip with two Phillips screws that we pulled off. Um, there's a little clip for this panel here and uh, one flathead screw, plastic screw there and two over here to get this panel off. Now this panel on this side actually has to be, you need to remove the entire quarter panel panel. It goes all the way up into the sail panel. Um, but we opted because if we're going to be putting the battery in here, we're going to want to be able to pull this in and out quickly to change the batteries if we have to change the battery. So we're gonna just go ahead and actually cut this panel right where the clips are to make it kinda of seamless, basically. We'll put it right where the clip is and right where this panel is. That way the clip will hold this together and the, the uh, curtain clip will hold these pieces together. And then we should be able to pull this panel in and out. All right. 
We're going to take a box cutter, just cut our panel. Done. Get back there with a the panel popper. All right, now this, that's what's inside of this thing. So I'm gonna take this off. Okay, there's two little plastic screws here. One here, and one on the bottom. So, all I'm doing now is I'm just going to tear it off actually, it's just a piece of cardboard. I'm going to put the little panel popper back there. Came right off. Alright, so we put the battery in place just to mock it up. That's a BMR battery hold down uh, tray. So it looks pretty good. You can probably just cut one of the one of the brackets off and have our fabricator just make his own back brackets and tack them and weld them to the frame. So that's how it looks in there. Okay, so we cut the tabs off the sides, we cut these bolts a little bit, and now everything fits nice and tight back there. Now we're running the battery cable. This is one zero uh, welding cable. We're running from the battery from the back straight to the starter. We're not doing this in an HRA legal way because uh, we're not concerned with that, so if you really want to do it the uh, NHRA legal way, which is when you shut off the battery shut off um, switch in the back, it shuts off the car when it's running. This is just so we have room for the turbos, so we're not concerned with that. Uh, if you want to do it that way, the NHRA legal way, I have a video on my channel on how to do it that way. So check out that video. Anyway, over here we're going through the grommet here for the antenna. The antenna wire. So we're following that. And this is the passenger side of the car. So it goes through here from the wheel well. Then it goes straight up and out through here. All right, now on this battery cable wire, we just put a thermal sleeve on it. And we're going to put some wire loom on it. Alright, so we trimmed the end of that wire. We're gonna use a lug on it. And we're gonna crimp it. Now we're gonna use this to crimp it. Look at that. It's awesome crimp. So we put a big heat shrink tube on it. It's gotta be bent at a 90. So we bent it a little bit at a 90. Watch yourself over there. We made a cable for the alternator wire, so we're just putting that on now. That's a 6 gauge cable. Alright, now we're going to splice the alternator wire with the battery cable. So we cut a little piece of uh, half inch pipe, and now we're cleaning it. Clean it inside and out. Alright, now we're cutting through it, cutting through it with snips. Okay. 
Now that we opened it up, I'm just going to join it too. Now we're using some flux and we're going to solder that bad boy in. Now we put a heat shrink tubing right over it. Now another way to do this was, would be to use a junction block, block, but we couldn't do it in this car because we don't have enough real estate in the engine bay. So this is a different way to do this. That's done. Now we're going to route the wire down to the starter. So we put the battery wire on the starter solenoid and that's how it looks. We're now inside the car. We're going to take that Torx bolt off. T50. To T50. Go in the battery cable underneath. Now there's a half inch bolt here to remove the seat. Okay. Okay. Slide this out from under there. Now cut the cable. Should have fucking done this before. Put that on there, and then you can just tighten it down on the terminal over there. As you're tightening it down, it'll grip the wire. Okay. And that's all very really good. So, that's it. We have our positive cable. Okay. Negative side, you can make a cable. I'm gonna cut it right there. That's an 18 millimeter. We finished our ground cable, so that's gonna be our ground now. So we're pretty much done with our battery relocation. Up next, we're gonna show you real quick how to do some transmission lines and some power steering lines. All right, now we're gonna make custom steel braided tranny lines. This hose we're using is a Jex hose, and the inside it's, it's still braiding with a nylon wrap outside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make a custom line. That's the way it comes, the fitting. So you unscrew that. You pop that end on the hose.
I'd like to leave about a sixteenth of an inch gap between the hose and the fitting and now screw this back on on top of it and it forces its way inside the hose as you're screwing down. Now you could use aluminum jaws for the vise that are for AN fittings but since uh, our audience isn't rich and doesn't have fancy tools we're just going to do it this way. You can also wrap some tape around it now what we're doing here is we're going to use some tape you don't have to get an expensive AN adjustable wrench which is like 50 bucks crank her down and you're good now if you have problems putting it in you can also use some hose assembly lube because lube makes everything go smoother or any other butter sauce or personal lubricant you like to use now this is a train line adapter it adapts the threads from the cooling lines on the radiator to dash 6an put that on you don't have to go too gorilla Okay, now we're going to use a pipe cutter to cut the transmission line right there. It's cut. Now slide an AN tube nut and an AN sleeve. Alright, now here we're going to use a 37 degree flaring tool. Now the reason why we're putting flexible hoses because uh, the, the turbo piping is going to be in the way so we want something that we could easily just route around it. I'm just going to cut that there. We put the blue tape to see where we have to cut it. Uh, we'll put the, turn this on and then the bottom over here we already put the fitting on so just tighten that up and it fits nice. Alright now we're cutting the other line right there, and the same exact process we're going to do on this side. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so this is how they both look. Just got to tighten them down here. We didn't do that yet, but we're going to do that now. And the radiator hose is in place. We routed it close to the radiator hose. So that's how they both look. The return and a feed. Transmission cooling lines. These are the fittings we're using in the power steering box. These are Saginaw fittings. This is the JEX part number. Uh, one in the 16 millimeter by one and a half o-ring and that's it right there and the other end is a dash six male so you just put it in there on top of the steering box and they're both the the feed and return of the both are the same adapters and as you can see here you could put the your, your an fitting on it straight on it now for power steering lines you have to use special power steering hoses these are Teflon hoses and they have a really high burst rating and you also have to use special power steering line fittings with this now first thing is push this in next is put the ferrule in between the steel braiding and the Teflon push that in as much as you can right there now pull that sleeve over it and then put the fitting in and tighten that down. So we're gonna go ahead and make this slide and put it on the car. All right, so we just put it in. We routed it behind the power steering pump over there underneath, hugging the steering box. And we also put a high temperature sleeve around it. 
All right, so the car was away for a couple of months and we got it back now. This is what everything looks like. We just had it running so we could move it into storage. We put a remote reservoir tank here for the power steering. We're actually going to get another tank and put it over here somewhere. Uh, right now, we're just going to take the headers off. These are the ARP bolts the five, with the 516 heads here. I'm going to go ahead and take those off. All right, we're just taking these headers off now. Some of them you have to get with uh, open end or box end. These are all 516s, like I said. So we're just going to go ahead and loosen all these and take the bolts off. All right, now everything's unbolted on top, the headers. Now we're just unbolting the white pipe. There's a 916 bolt here. And the other side, that flange is off too. All right, now this side of the white pipe. And that's off too. Now take the passenger side header off. And now the driver's side header. And that came right off. Let's take the O2 sensor off the clip. So, <clears throat> what we did was we ordered some half inch thick steel plate mild steel cold rolled steel and we took it over to a local shop here and they traced out a header gasket then we ordered a bunch of schedule 40 inch and a half 90 degree elbows short radius and long radius and they look like this Okay, we took this to a professional welder only because this is probably one of the hardest parts about welding this is we had them bend and weld on short radius tubes 90 degree elbows on the front and rear ports of the header flange and the long radius ones in the center okay and the idea behind this is that we want to make a log style manifold for the twin turbo Trans Am, and it's going to be basically two identical sides, one on each side, two log manifolds that look identical, just reversed from each other. So the shape so far, as you can see, is this flange will be bolted to the motor like this, and the ports will be facing up, and the pipes will be sort of like this if you can see that and the log pipe will be on the top so basically up towards the valve cover and that's basically how the log manifold is going to be for the purpose of kind of trying to duplicate what, uh, let's say, for example, Nelson Racing does with his, with his headers where he hangs the turbo upside down from a 90 degree elbow. And that's the positioning that we're shooting for with these manifolds. So, um, in addition to the Schedule 40 inch and a half uh, 90 degree elbows, we also ordered uh, Schedule 40 pipe, straight pipe and schedule 40 two and a half inch straight pipe uh, we ordered two 12 inch sections for the two and a half and two 12 inch sections of the inch and a half pipe and what we did was we know that we have to weld on the inch and a half pipe to the two and a half inch pipe so it needs to be made up 90 degree from that. And since we don't have a uh, pipe notching tool, or what we did was went to uh, metalgeek.com, which is a website, and you can basically what it does is it gives you um, it does the math for notching pipes. And what we did was you put in the pipe diameter inside, outside, and what angle and what offset you want to use and what it does for you is it allows you to print up a PDF 
of a piece of paper in actual size that you wrap around your pipe with some tape just like that well, sorry I don't have it too tight and what you do is when you line it up correctly and tape it what you do is you trace it out on your pipe scribe it onto your pipe and what we did was we use a regular small inch small cutting wheel actually a Harbor Freight tool and believe it or not for about twenty dollars small cutting wheel like this electric and by hand we just cut out the pipes and what's nice about that as opposed to using a pipe uh, notching tube tube cutting tool is when you put your pipe into the machine and you cut it with a hole saw bit um, I don't necessarily know if you have if you are left over with two pieces but when you do it like that the way we did with the uh, piece of paper taped onto the pipe is when you cut the pipe you're left with two identical cuts which then gives you two if you do the math correctly you have two pieces of pipe that are exactly cut to fit your to made up with your pipes so all right, so today we're going to try to fit up the rest of the pipes and uh, hopefully start TIG welding or at least tack welding the manifold together to get it ready to TIG weld the whole assembly. Actually, before we uh, proceed to the welding, because there's still a lot of prep work to be done, I want to just talk about the, uh, the flange uh, once again here. So, as I said, it's a half inch thick mild steel header flange and I took it to a local shop around here and what he did was is he basically welded they welded the elbows on to the flange that they traced from a felpro gasket now on the ends here they they actually cut the metal with the notches in the felpro gasket which I told them not to do but they did that anyways and I don't know how well it's gonna work out but in any event, I don't have much of a choice because um, we tried ordering flanges from a bunch of companies and the uh, uh, half inch thick mild, uh, cold rolled mild steel flanges aren't readily available on the shelf. So they wanted like, uh, you know, basically uh, I think Mandrel Benz told me like six month waiting period and uh, that's a little bit out of my time frame to get anything done. Anyways, I wanted to show you a little bit better, maybe a better angle. I basically clamped the uh, current flange up to the vise here and I'm just going to lay the pipes that I notched out here so you can see sort of what this is going to look like. Obviously there's a ton of prep work left in the pipes. That'll be the log on the top part. There'll be a V-band going to the front of the motor. And again, like we said, we're going to do a uh, CX Racing 90 degree hanging elbow V-band to a T4 flange um, to hang the turbo upside down. So the down pipe will be at the lower side and then come out the bottom of the car. And uh, basically the front and rear pipes will just snake up. But I wanted to give you an idea of what the plan is. And if you want to know how I got my measurements, uh, that pretty, was pretty simple. What I did was is I bolted this flange into the car and I took some angle iron and uh, laid it on top of the motor and then I tied the top pipe from the angle iron so that it could be in place and then I just measured from the bottom of this to the, to the bottom of that or excuse me the top of the, the elbow to the bottom of the pipe and that's how I got my measurement and uh, it actually worked out well um, the basically the top of this pipe is basically flush with the top of the intake manifold and the elbow and the turbo fits in pretty nicely so what we did here was we finished prepping the two center pipes cleaned up the top here as much as possible 
ran a light through the bottom of the pipe to make sure that there's very very minimal light coming through here should have zero light coming through but hey I'm no master fabricator so I'll just uh, add extra filler wire um, the other thing is, is um, these schedule 40 pipes they come coated in uh, some type of paint to protect it from rusting what you want to do is, is um, with the other one when even with my respirator on I didn't clean the inside of the pipes very well um, especially the uh, the, the uh, weld bend ones the green ones this paint on the inside um, I only I didn't really I just did a small cleanup and I left some in there and even with my respirator <clears throat> it stunk really bad um, and then I know what I did was is uh, on after like the first or second weld I, I started cleaning like probably about a half inch through the inside of the pipe of the paint and uh, that reduced the, the smell down to almost nothing so that's just a word of advice um, if you're gonna get schedule 40 steel pipes make sure you grind the uh, paint away on the inside of the pipe just as, as well as the outside obviously the outside you know you have to weld but it really does uh, make a difference in the uh, fumes alright so we mounted this manifold on here we put a level here so this is nice and straight let me show you there right there see the bubble and we want to make this level too it's nice and level there too okay so. and we put those two in there we oh. grind this down so we can weld it there all right and then so that everyone gets an idea of the what, what the positioning is going to be like yeah, this is going to sit here position we're going to put a v-band over there correct so this will be this way cool and of course when you weld these you got to put like a little uh, bevel here so the bead could catch so that's what it looks like so far we're going to start welding alright so now we're going to put some quick tacks here just to hold this all together Alright, so we tacked these on like this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut these off and we're gonna put a hole saw through here and use this as a guide for the hole saw. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side, but we're gonna do this side first. Alright, now we're gonna put a hole saw there. Yeah, baby. So we got. Look at that! Look at the hole. Nice. Woo! Look at those perfect holes, baby. And now we're just gonna tack this all back together, and it's coming out nicely. And we do the same thing on this side now. We popped the tacks off of that. Made this tube and made the hole in there. Right, we're going to go in here with the carbide bit now just to smoothen out that edge over there. Alright, so that's what it looks like. Put two bends over here and we file down in there if there's any loose metal. Go ahead and tack this up. Alright, so on this end over here we cut a little piece over here, we'll put in elbows here and the goal is to get this pretty much centered over here and we're just gonna cut a piece of pipe and try to shape it open and weld it around here and form it so it's gonna look something like this alright now we're doing this piece here the transition piece in the back we got regular pipe and we just cut pieces out of it and flattened it up and we're just going to weld them like that all around came out real nice now we're going to clean up all the tack welds and start welding everything up we're not going to show you that, it's going to take too much time but you guys get the idea 
So that's the finished product right here, pre-welding. And that's what it looks like all welded up. Alright guys, I had some footage of how the manifolds looked inside the engine bay, but I lost it. So here's the next best thing. This is from Instagram, and as you can see how the log manifolds look. They clear everything, and it looks pretty sweet. Alright, now we're doing the down pipes from the turbos. And we're going to connect these to the existing Y pipe. And this is one side already done. Now we're going to do the other side. And these are three inch pipes, and we're using these bank V-bank clamps from JEGS. And we're using vibrant performance mandrel bent stainless steel three inch tubing to do this. And now you can do the other side. Alright, now here we marked everything in, the elbow's in, the turbo's on, and the pipe is over there, and we're marking it where to cut it. We're going to put some tacks in the V-band right now. Going to tack a bend on there. Alright, so we put this back on the car and we're marking it up, see where we need to cut stuff, how to position pipes and stuff like that. So there's a lot of mock-up. I'm not going to be filming everything, but you guys get the idea what you got to do here. Okay, so it's pretty much done. It's tacked up, just needs some welding. And the last step would be to connect the flange to this pipe and the white pipe to collect them both. The same thing is done over here on this side, on the other turbo, right into the white pipe. All right, now we're doing the wastegates. This is a turbo smart wastegate, and we're putting it onto a CX CX Racing elbow stainless steel. And we'll show you how we did this uh, when we do it on the other side. Actually, so this is what we need. This is the wastegate. It's got the flange, the ring and stuff. This inch and a half stainless steel pipe. And this is a pipe master. It's like a little forming tool where you get the layout uh, when you put it on the pipe and outline it on the pipe and cut it where it needs to be to form exactly the shape that you're gonna put the pipe on. In this case, this is the pipe master part number PFR-P-150. All right, now we're gonna assemble it together. Put the ring on, put the V-band on it, and we're going to go on the car and show you how to use that tool. Alright, so we're going to put that over there, and this tool is great for putting it on shapes that aren't circular. So make sure it's flat first, put on a flat surface. This is sort of like those body tools that they use. Put that on there. And now take the shape of the pipe right there. And that's what that, what that looks like. Okay, now slide it over the pipe that you're going to use. And trace that outline.
And once it's traced, you can take that off. And you just cut around the line. All right, now we roughly cut it. And as you can see, it fits pretty good. So we have, that's what we have so far. Now we're going to clean this up. Alright, so we cut. This is how much we needed to cut, it's just a little piece. And we're going to weld this to the flange here. Then we take that off. We're going to weld it on here. Then put a hole saw in here to make the hole. So we're just going to go ahead and weld this around here now. That's all. Alright, so we welded everything here. To weld it on there. Now we're going to get a hole saw, an inch and a half hole saw, and open up that hole right there. We use a carbide bit now to open this up and smooth it out. All right, so we did here. We welded the V-band ring to this mild steel uh, piece over this log. And the way when, when we did that, we had this sand steel elbow on here, all clamped up together. Because you have to put a lot of mounting heat over here. You don't want to warp this. And what that does is um, that draws in the heat, so this doesn't warp when you have everything clamped together. So we just went ahead and. We'll do that on. And that's what it looks like on the car and in place. And we try to make it look a little symmetrical. And that's where we're at so far. So now we're doing the wastegate pipes. And this is the pipe that goes out from the wastegate, relieves the pressure. And we're connecting this pipe directly to the down pipe we just did with V bands to recirculate it back into the exhaust. Uh, this side's pretty much done, as you can see over here. And that pipe goes all the way down there to this down pipe. So that pretty much concludes the hot sides of these turbos. All right, now to feed the turbos, we've got this copper nickel line. We just bent it around and over the engine underneath over there. And it's gonna feed from the oil pressure sensor where the oil filter is. It's going to go into this T here, into these lines, straight into the turbos. We're just going to do that. All right, now here we're going to make a bracket to hold the underside of the intercooler. And once we do that, our next step is to make the pipe from the intercooler to the intake. So we take some measurements. We're going to make a bracket. We already put the thread certs in there, so we're good. All right, so we just made that bracket. And use thread suits in there, and we'll do the bracket together right onto the mounting of the intercooler over there. And we also made the brackets up here to hold the intercooler on top. So these intercoolers are bolted in and mocked up for now. Okay, a little overview. We have a GTA, Pontiac GTA, with a relatively stock looking appearance. And under the hood we have twin turbos all right so little overview of the project the idea with this car was to keep the outside of the vehicle looking as stock as possible and you can see that by the appearance of the vehicle it just looks like a stock GTA no fancy custom hood ground effects or spoiler has the GTA looking wheels and under the hood we have packed in twin turbos today's episode we're going to do the cold side piping of the turbo for the fabrication as we have already done the hot side piping which consists of the log manifolds 
the wastegate piping out of the elbows and the wastegate pipe going from the wastegate down to the downpipe. We have the downpipes going to the exhaust. You have your turbochargers. On top you have your intercoolers with your cold side piping going into the throttle body. And today we need to complete the cold side piping going from the turbo out the bottom around into the intercooler and up. All right. Okay, to make room to do the cold side piping off the turbo, we're going to remove this intake pipe here. Okay, now that that's loose, I'm going to pull up on the pipe. move out of the way. We're going to install this silicone 2 inch 90 hose onto the turbocharger and that's where the first pipe is going to connect to. We bought these uh, 2 inch silicone 90 hoses from frozenboost.com along with these stainless steel T-bolt clamps from frozenboost.com and what really helps to slide these on is if you spray a little silicone spray on the inside, just a dab. And that'll really help slide the hoses on. With the silicone 90 elbow hooked onto the turbo with the clamp and tightened down, we're going to take our first measurement from the bottom with the pipe in order to see our first cut of the pipe that's going to come out of that elbow. From the bottom here we can see the rubber elbow and we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to see how much room we have. Okay. Now you're going to want the pipe to go in at least an inch into the pipe because you're going to need to clamp it in. So we have to count for the one inch in the pipe in the rubber silicone hose and for whatever's going to come out. Let's take that measurement. Here we have our 2 inch stainless steel 90 pipe that's going to go into the turbo and we've measured an inch and a quarter off the radius. We're going to cut the pipe and then we're going to bead roll it. We'll show you that in a minute with the bead rolling tool. And then we're going to slide the pipe in, drop it down and then take our next measurement for the bottom side. Alright, here we've cut the pipe down and we're going to bead roll the pipe and we'll show you the bead rolling tool that we use to bead roll it. Here we have a JEGS tubing beater part number 80083 and what it comes with is a tool that looks like this put the pipe in on the bottom and you clamp it down and then you put the crank handle on the back side right there and you crank the pipe to get a bead let's set that up now on the vise and we take a look at it okay here we've set up our vise in order to clear the pipe and we'll put the handle on put the pipe in crank the tool down and turn the vise handle the crank handle to roll the bead. Now, this is something you're going to want to keep turning over and over and over until you get the bead that you want. And just take your time, crank the handle down slowly, and slowly crank it over and over again until you get the bead you want. And when you're done, We'll have a bead that looks like that. All right. Now that this pipe is done, we're going to put a little silicone on it to slide into the silicone connector. Slide it in and take our next measurement. Now that we have the pipe in the silicone hose and coming down, next what we're going to do is install 
another pipe, just a straight piece into the intercooler, right there. And once we have the pipe in from there, we'll take a center line measurement from pipe to pipe. To get a better idea of what we're talking about, looking from underneath, you can see the pipe is coming out of the turbo and the pipe we have been coming out of the intercooler and we're going to take the center measurement between the two pipes and that way we know where to cut the next pieces I put the wall, I put this pipe flush against the wall okay I measure from the center of that pipe to the center of this pipe to get 14 inches once I have 14 inches on center what I do is I measure from the wall to this pipe here and I know that 9 inches from the wall to this pipe here will give me 14 on center of each pipe. Alright, so we'll cut that up now. Of course 90 elbows in the cold side or any side of your turbo setup is going to cause some type of restriction which is heat, which is bad, very inefficient, but we have a goal, and the goal is to keep the car looking stock and clean. Okay. Now that we cut this pipe here, we measure from center to there, center of that pipe to the center of this pipe, we have 14 inches. I'm going to tape this up here. I'm going to take some measurements to make the first cut on this side, and then we'll make the other side, the cut on this pipe to that side. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that now. Okay, now that we've made the piece up, taped it together, looks like this, we're going to do a test fit to make sure it all fits in. What we'll do is we'll test fit it, and if it fits good, we'll take it apart, we'll do the last bead roll over here, and then we'll tack it together, do one last test fit, and we'll burn it together once it's done. Alright, so we're going to set the bead roll up in the vise. the piece we're going to bead roll here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lubricate it with some silicone or, or WD-40 in and out on the pipe inside and outside. Also lubricate the tool, put the pipe in, crank it down, not too tight. You want to get it started first. Let's begin rolling that bead. You want to go nice and slow. Hold the pipe and guide it in place until you make it, until you make, start that bead. And there you have it. Nice bead roll. So now, when you put your hose on and you clamp it, under pressure, the hose won't want to slide off. All right. It's all welded up. We also painted it just flat black so that you can't see it under the car. This is what the final piece looks like. It's all completed, it's welded, and ready to go in the car. And we'll take a look, see what that looks like in the car. So, this is the pipe in the car. Goes into the turbo, comes out, goes around up under into the intercooler and off camera we did the other side and the end goal for both of these was so that you don't see it when the car is on the ground all right now we're ready to start this thing uh we disconnected the coil the ignition coil and the distributor and we're gonna squirt some oil into the turbo just to make sure we prime it we don't want to, you don't want never want to start a turbo dry because you could ruin the bearings. So we do the same thing to the other turbo. So we disconnected the feed line. And we're just gonna crank it. Remember, we disconnected the distributor and the ignition coil, so it's not gonna fire. We're just gonna crank it so there's oil coming out of this tube that's gonna feed the turbos. And we're 
we're good. All right, so we're just gonna start for a little bit, see if there's any leaks, and see if we're good to go. Sweet. Right, so we're removing the underhood insulation over here. We're gonna put a fireproof one in. That's one of the things that we're doing. Next up is this baby right here. It's an oil cooler. Fan oil cooler assembly that we bought from frozenboost.com. You know, when you add turbos, oil gets really hot because the oil goes into the turbocharger and then goes right into the oil pan and you really need to heat get that heat out of the oil so we're gonna add this cooler it's gonna go up in the fender well we're gonna make a bracket we're gonna make a bracket that runs across here and across here and then we'll bolt it in okay so we went ahead and made this bracket for the engine oil cooler just a basic bracket some flat stock and we're gonna put it in the car mark it and then tack weld on the bolts that are gonna mount it to the vehicle all right okay so we just finished uh, mounting the bracket and the cooler to the car this is in the this is right below the what would normally be the left front battery tray and this is the bottom view this is the engine oil cooler this is the sandwich plate we're putting in. This is part number 25720 from Derailly. And this goes where the stock cooler is. This will feed the oil to the cooler that we just put in. This also has an integrated thermostat which opens up for the flow to come through the cooler at 180 degrees. Now let me show you what it looks like. This is the plate and that's the thermostat I was talking about right there. It also comes with this threaded sleeve and that's where the oil filter mounts to. Now let me show you what this all looks like on the car. And that's what it looks like when the sandwich plate is mounted in. It goes between the block and the oil filter. And these are the cooler lines with PTFE lines here. And the cooler is mounted right in there, in the fender. Now we're going to start off by wrapping this down pipe. So we're using this uh, DEI wrap, this lava wrap. And when you put it on, you're supposed to only overlap about a quarter inch or else you're going to have too much excessive heat in certain spots where you overwrap it and it's going to damage the downpipe. So go ahead and wrap this up now. Alright, so you fold the top a little bit then you begin. You're going to wrap her up. With a quarter inch overlap, stretch it out. So, you guys get the idea. We're going to go ahead and do this whole thing. Now, when you reach the end, they give you these metal zip ties here to hold everything together. There you go. And this whole thing is done. Alright, now we're taking everything apart. The manifold, the turbo, everything associated with the header, pretty much, the downpipe, everything is going to be taken apart. And we're going to wrap everything. Okay, so we took everything apart, wrapped everything here. The only thing we didn't do yet is put the turbo blankets on. Because those, those came in the mail today but we don't have them here so we're gonna go ahead and put everything back in the car now we'll show you the whole process of putting these back in the car we're putting the driver's side log manifold in and we're using copper header gaskets to put them in and the 5 16th headed bolts ARP header bolts so you can put a nice socket on there uh, you have a lot of room for that for the socket uh, we're also putting some red high temp uh, RTV on the header bolts
We're gonna hang the header gasket. Okay, now we put, put the manifold on. And we're gonna put the rest of the header bolts in. Alright, so they're all tight, and this is the last header bolt we need to tighten down. And this manifold is in. Okay, now the right side manifold is gonna go in. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten this manifold down too. And the last one. And both manifolds are in. Okay, we're going to put the down pipe in now. Got to feed it down. That goes in first. And just rest it right there. Alright, so real quick here, we're putting, we put studs on the elbow over there. And there's a little gasket, a little metal shim gasket that goes on there. We're going to put the wastegate onto the hot side of the turbo. Put those nuts on. Now we're going to put the turbo in with the wastegate all attached and the oil lines also there. The return line. The V band on. Pop it in, snap it down. Okay, now we just put the V band there and we're going to position the down pipe. Connect it to the hot side of the turbo over there and we put the clamp on and that's on. Now we're going to put the down pipe on the driver's side. Slip it in. Position it where you need it. And that's good. Now put the turbo and the wastegate down on inside the engine bay on the driver's side. And it's good. Now we're doing the hot side of that turbo. Put the V-band on. Now this is the pipe that goes from the wastegate to the down pipe. Uh, we put a little flex pipe on this thing because the exhaust where the, hot pi where the down pipe is, it flexes. And these things tend to crack. So that's going to absorb the flex. Alright, it's so going to put this on there. And now the passenger side. Finagle it in there. And pop the V-band on. Alright, now we're down here. Everything on top is pretty much in place. And we're putting the down pipe onto the Y pipe over here of the exhaust. The V-band in for that one. Now this is the other side of the white pipe on the passenger side. Okay. And now we're putting on the V-bands on the wastegate pipes and tying those bands down. Okay. And now we're putting the oil feed lines in. On the top of the turbos here. And tighten those down. One on this side and one on this side. Alright, so these are Nice and tight, good and tight. I'm going to put the intake pipe on. Connect the inlet air temperature sensor. Alright, now we're going to put the intercoolers in. These are, each one is rated for 650 horsepower. This is a water to air intercooler, but we're not going to plumb the water. Because we're running out of time, this car has to be in the car show in a week. However, I will make a separate video on plumbing water to these things, and that will be in the description below. Now for the bottom, we're going to bolt it in from the bottom of the intercooler. We're going to put this uh, intake piping in now in between the intercooler and the uh, in 
take it over there. We use some silicone lube. Spray inside these silicone sleeves. These we got from frozenboost.com. And this side is on. Now we're just gonna put the clamps on these. All right, so what we're doing now is you see these brake lines. This one's actually touching the log manifold over here. So we're gonna put a LS1 from a 2001 Trans Am Master, which is a half inch further outboard this way. And this is it here. So we'll go ahead and do that and see how that looks. Let's take out the old fluid. Take the lines off. There's two 968 nuts in the back. Hold it to the booster. Two lines are off on the side. And take this mass cylinder off. Okay, now we got the new master device and we're bench bleeding it. Just put a syringe over there. Just took the fluid out. Alright, so we got all this extra space now with the 4th gen master. It's bolted up, bled, tied down, and it's all good now. Alright, so we put the clamps on here, on both sides. We put the turbo blankets on. And that's pretty much everything. Took a little test spin. Everything looks good, nothing touching anywhere on the, on the headers or anything like that. So, we're all good to go here. One last thing I want to mention is that we were in a time crunch in this car, so there were a few things that we didn't get to finish. We didn't get a chance to put the AC lines in, and we had no time to tune it. So we decided to drive this car with no springs in the wastegates, so it produces no boost. And we had no time to put in a blow-off valve. So I will make a follow-up video addressing all those issues and also shoot a video on how to run water to the intercoolers. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified for future videos. See ya!